Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at ridge regression. This is part one in the, of a four part series to sort of keep each video a little bit shorter in time. Now, I have some background videos on multicollinearity, which I'm going to call PV40, 41, and 42. So previous video, 40 in the playlist, 41 and 42. And the playlist is general linear models regression. Now here's the setting, y is equal to x beta plus epsilon. Um, and I have stars here because we're going to kind of change it and I don't want to carry the stars through the rest of the video. But uh, x star is n by k plus 1 and we're going to center it and scale it. And I have a video, previous video 39 in this playlist on centering and scaling. So what we do is we take that first column of 1's and separate it. So that's what we do here. Now since the model is centered, the least squares estimate for beta 0 is x bar. So what we do is we take this and subtract the other side and just put the least squares estimate in, which is y bar. And so this is our new model. Now, so now x contains only the variables that we think are predictive in y. So x is n by k. Now usually this new variable, you know, y where we subtract the mean of y from each component, we would call y star. And then, so what follows, everything we need to put y star. But I'm just going to call it y, because I, I don't really like carrying that star around in, in all the development. So when we look at the least squares estimate for this beta, really we should, this should be y star, but I'm labeling, relabeling it just y. So this y has all the, each component has the mean subtracted off of it. So this is the least squares estimate of beta. It's x transpose x inverse x transpose y. Now, from previous video 42, we looked at the sum of the variances of these components. So this is a k by 1 vector. And each component, there's an associated variance. And let's add them up. And that's what this represents. We've shown that it is sigma squared the sum of 1 over lambda i, or lambda i inverse, where lambda is an eigenvalue of x transpose x. And a lot of this comes from these background videos. And we'll cover some of it here, but so much more detail in these videos. So now, if there's multicollinearity in our design matrix, then at least one of these eigenvalues associated with x transpose x is really small. And that is this eigenvalue. So this, this sum will be large because if one of these eigenvalues is small, so 1 divided by a small number is actually quite large. And so these variance is, are, the total variance is inflated. And we need, you know, and that's not a good property to have. And so um, one way to combat that is, is ridge regression. So we look at this, what's called a ridge estimator, where we add a small number, call it script A, and um, usually it's just called K, or you know, it's a, an italicized K in a book, but I just, so I put a little curly Q on it. And uh, so really this is the same estimator as this, except for we're putting a small number we're adding a small number down the diagonal of this matrix. And that's why they call it ridge. That's kind of like the ridge of this matrix. Um, and so this script K is called a shrinkage parameter. And it's usually, it's always positive and it's typically very small. So now let's study the properties of this. And so you, I'm, I've sort of foreshadowed that that when there's multicollinearity, the, the, the total variance is can be quite large. So adding this, maybe it's going to reduce this total variance. And Well, and the answer is yes. Um, so now in a lot of the development, we need to create what's called the spectral decomposition of X transpose X. So where V are the orthonormal eigenvectors of this X transpose X, 
lambda i are the eigenvalues and we put them in a matrix a diagonal matrix that we'll call d now these eigenvalues up here are the same as these eigenvalues so now let's look at the variance covariance matrix for the uh, ridge estimator right it's not the least squares estimator it's the ridge estimator it's kind of like the least squares but we're adding this shrinkage parameter you know a number down the diagonal down the ridge of that matrix so the variance is this because that's the estimate and and these are constant so you can take it out front and then you have to transpose it out back and that's what we get here and we're just left with the variance of y now the variance of y is sigma squared i so the sigma squared can actually come out front at a little constant and then the i component kind of vanishes because it's the uh, you know the identity matrix and we're just left with this now we put in our spectral decomp oh and I put quotes around spectral decomp because I have a video called spectral decomposition I think it's in my matrix playlist if you want to search that so here we have VDV that's the spectral decomposition of X transpose X and I can be thought of as V, V transpose, because these are orthonormal eigenvectors. V, you know, VDV, VDV, and then that's I again. So what we're going to do is left factor out of V and right factor out of V transpose in, in both of these matrices, or these, yeah, matrices. <coughs> so that's what we do here. Now we take that inverse in, so the inverse of this, then it gets put to the front, so the inverse of V transpose is just V because they're orthonormal eigenvectors. So it looks like that we just left factor out of V with, and ignore the inverse, but we don't. The same way here. So this V gets to the back and the inverse of V is V transpose. So that's what this is. This comes down and we did the same trick over here. But now V transpose V is the identity. Same here. And then we're just left with this. And so this is diagonal matrix, diagonal, diagonal. So multiplying diagonal matrices is pretty straightforward. And the D, of course, is a diagonal with the uh, eigenvalues. And this is just a diagonal matrix with K, the shrinkage parameter down the middle. And so we get this, lambda I over lambda I plus K quantity squared. Now when you multiply this out, so the, if you think about these as vector 1, vector 2, vec, you know, all the way to vector k, then you, this matrix multiplication becomes this sum where we're just looking at, you know, and this actually creates, each vector in V creates another little matrix and then we're adding them all together with this component out front. And that's it. This is the variance covariance matrix of a ridge estimator. But for comparison, if we were to calculate the variance covariance matrix of our least squares estimate, which we've shown in previous videos to be this, sigma squared x transpose x inverse, we put in the um, spectral decomposition for x transpose x, and then distribute the, the inverse, and we get this, and then this can be written in this form. So actually, there they're 100% identical except for this little constant out front. And so um, we're going to show that this number here, this total variance, is smaller than this. And, and let's look at a few notes here. That if yeah, the shrinkage parameter is 0, so we put in 0, then this reduces to just you know what we have in the least squares estimate so there's no change and that makes sense you know if you add nothing then nothing changes but if you're going to add a small number uh, you know then this number here you can show us is, is smaller than the um, least squares estimate or this you know this eigenvalue so this becomes much smaller than this and so Let's look at some examples. So the impact of the shrinkage parameter, parameter really depends upon the, the eigenvalue itself. So let's say we have an eigenvalue of 0 0.001 and we don't use a shrinkage parameter, then it can be shown that this is a thousand. So one of these matrices is getting multiplied by a thousand, or be this case right here, right? Because K is zero. 
So one of these is getting multiplied by a thousand. But if we add a shrinkage parameter, and then we calculate this number, it's 8.2. So instead of multiplying one of these matrices by a thousand and really increasing that total variance, we're only adding 8.2. So the, the variance has shrunk quite a bit, just adding a small little shrinkage parameter number. Now, if the eigenvalues are larger than adding that shrinkage parameter, you know, and then we calculate this, it's only 0.98. So it actually has little effect on eigenvalues that are larger and has a huge impact when the eigenvalues are small. So if there's severe multicollinearity, this is going to really reduce the total variance quite a bit. Now, if we look at this, so this, well, up here we calculate the variance covariance matrix. But if we wanted just some each component of the ridge estimator and, and so create like a total variance. What it is is, you know, the, the variance covariance matrix that we just calculated up here. If we add the diagonal elements, which is the trace, that's what this represents. So then this, which we just calculated to be this, is this. And since it's trace, we can move that V to the back. And that's the identity. So we're taking the trace of a diagonal matrix, which is which is quite easy to, to calculate. It's just the sum of the diagonal elements. And then we showed that, that this is always less than this, right? If, but this is the total variance of our least squares estimate. So we have reduced the total variance in our model by using the ridge regression technique you know, adding that little shrinkage parameter. Okay, but, so we've reduced the variance, but at what cost? And, and the cost is that our beta parameters are now biased. And so in part two, we're going to investigate the bias in these beta parameters, in the ridge, uh, ridge estimator. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.